Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, the uh, 17th uh, week after Pentecost. Wednesday, as you all know by now, is our very busy day in Spotswood. Um, today, we are remembering Philander Chase. Who... Philander Chase, not Philander. I... That's a different word. <laughs> See, I couldn't even I couldn't even get his name right, and I'm already uh, falling on my face. Well, this this guy who we see here, um, Bylander Chase, um, has a fascinating story and a connection to St. Peter Spotswood. He was born in the uh, eighteen late seventeen ninety five in uh, in New Hampshire. He was born, um, his family was uh, descendants of, of the founders of the town. His father was a deacon and uh, they were Puritans. His father was deacon in the congregational church and wanted one of his sons to become a minister. Uh, Bylander was the youngest and as the older brothers were not interested, it fell to him. While at Dartmouth, he discovered the Book of Common Prayer and there and at that point, I guess, uh, Episcopalian. Um, so he became Episcopalian and um, continued his studies and uh, became a professional lay reader. Um, I was telling a father that that sounds like a pretty cool job to have or a volunteer job to have. Uh, and then he went on to uh, be, uh, he went through general theological seminary and ordained a priest. Um, he is a, a missionary at heart. He, he was focused on expanding um, the reaches of the Episcopal Church. He was in Los, uh, Louisiana, where he uh, baptized and preached along the way. He established churches and uh, eventually went you know, back and forth, he crossed the country, he went back to New York, um, made his way to Ohio, which was a brand new state at the time. It was his dream to open um, a church and a a college and a seminary. There was some um, debate uh, why we, we would need a seminary. We already had general in New York, um, but he was adamant and he founded Kenyon College which is the alma mater of our dear rector, Father Marshall. Um, after many, some time there, there was a bit of a falling out and he retired to Michigan. He was called to become the first, oh, he was made Bishop of Ohio. Um, I'm probably a little out of order now. Uh, retired from being Bishop and from the school, retired to- You want some Michigan. help on that? Sorry? You want some help on that? That's my era, so. Okay, so so two two more bits, and then I'll I'll toss it to you. There you go. Um, he ended. He also became the first bishop of Illinois, and same thing. Wanted to establish a seminary and a, a, a college there, but our connection in Spotswood, he uh, Bishop Chase was mm -hmm. consecrated bishop. And in, in our church, you are consecrate, you are made a bishop by the laying on of hands of three other bishops. And the other bishops uh, included uh, Bishop Crows, who is Bishop of New Jersey, and Bishop Crows, John Crows, came out of St. Peter Spotswood. So that is our personal connection to Philander Chase, both St. Peter Spotswood and Father Marshall's Amala. Ama alma mater and clean up my mess so he when he when he was uh the founder of kenyan college he actually traveled overseas to establish the funding for this and his conflicts with john henry hobart who was arguing for an east coast based episcopal church versus a frontier based episcopal church was um was really epochal and defining of the early 1800s he uh in his travels he fell in with uh a party of people in the in the England called the Evangelicals, and uh, received money from Lady Ross, Dowager Countess, as well as 
Lord Kenyon and Lord Gambier. So Gambier, Ohio is where Kenyon is. And Ross Hall is the main uh, music hall of the college. Uh, he, uh, he had a communal living emphasis. In other words, he wanted to provide an environment where people worked and learned and lived together. His wife, God bless her soul, um, cooked for the students, uh, did their laundry and nursed them while he taught. Uh, his falling out with the faculty and the Board of Trustees was that they felt that a uh, Bishop of Ohio could not also be a president of the college and the rector of the church and the main leader and professor and the chair of the Board of Trustees. So um, there was an insurrection at which he wound up actually resigning from being president of the college and, pres and Bishop of Ohio. Charles McElvain uh, became the next Bishop of Ohio and president of the college and um, truly had some remarkable stories to tell about him, but that's an entirely other lesser free and fast. What makes Finlander fascinating on top of it all, not only his missionary travels and his time in Illinois as the first bishop there, so he was the founding bishop of two dioceses, he also rose in succession and seniority and became one of the early presiding bishops of the Episcopal Church. In those days, the presiding bishop was the most senior bishop um, diocesan with authority. So uh, he is truly one of those forgotten venerable figures um, and uh, his family, the Chase family, actually played a significant role in the United States and in its history. His nephews and cousins um, served in the cabinet of Abraham Lincoln, as well as um, in the Senate and in the Supreme Court. So there you go, finally, later Chase. He died um, while taking a carriage ride with his wife in, uh, in uh, Jubilee College was the carriage tipped over and he was thrown from it was gave a concussion as he was lifted up and carried to his home he said well i am going to heaven and thank god for that and he died the next morning so there you go he was over six feet tall he clocked in at over 300 pounds and as people described him he had the hands of a farmer and a cow and a cow herd so he was a massive human being and we do that both in terms of his impact on the church and also his physical stature. You can see his stern and rugged expression on his photo there. Um, quite a great photo, actually. A very early daguerreotype. Laura, it's yours. I'll read. Okay. So welcome to morning prayer. Uh, thank you for being with us. Um, I know we ran long. We were both so excited about uh, this, this feast day. If you have any intercessions or thanksgivings you would like to share with us, please add them to the comment box now. If you are live on Facebook, we will read them after the prayer attributed to St. Francis. If you are on YouTube, please again share and we will, um, we will read your, your intercessions and thanksgivings at the next daily office tonight, uh, evening prayer at 5 p.m. So now morning prayer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me for the antiphon and invitatory. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. 
Give thanks to him and call upon his name, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Our psalm this morning is a portion of Psalm 119. I will lead uh, with the odd verses. Please respond with the even. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all day long. Your commandment makes me wiser than my enemies, for it is always with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your decrees are my meditation. I understand more than the aged, for I keep your precepts. I hold back my feet from every evil way in order to keep your word. I do not turn away from your ordinances, for you have taught me. How sweet are your words to my, ta <clears throat> to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to observe your righteous ordinances. I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept my offerings of praise, O Lord, and teach me your ordinances. I hold my life in my hand continually, but I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. Your decrees are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. I hate the double-minded, but I love your law. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Go away from me, you evildoers, that I may keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according to your promise that I may live and let me not be put to shame in my hope. Hold me up that I may be safe and have regard for your statutes continually. You spurn all who go astray from your statutes for their cunning is in vain. All the wicked of the earth you count as dross. Therefore, I love your decrees. My flesh trembles for fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Now the company of prophets said to Elisha, as you see, the place where we live under your charge is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan and let us collect logs there, one for each of us, and build a place there for us to live. He answered, do so. Then one of them said, please come with your servants. And he answered, I will. So we went with them. When they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was felling a log, his axe head fell into the water. He cried out, alas, master, it was borrowed. And the man of God said, where did it fall? When he showed them the place, he cut off a stick and threw it in there and made the iron float. He said, pick it up. So he reached out his hand and took it. Once when the king of Aram was at war with Israel, he took counsel with his officers. He said, at such and such a place shall be my camp. But the man of God sent word to the king of Israel, take care not to pass this place because the Arameans are going down there. The king of Israel sent word to the place of which the man spoke. The man of God spoke more than once or twice. He warned such a place so that it was on the alert. The mind of the king of Aram was greatly perturbed because of this. He called his offers and said to them, now tell me among us who sides with the king of Israel. Then one of his offers said, no one, Lord, my Lord, the king. It is Elisha, the prophet in Israel, who tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedchamber. He said, Go and find where he is. I will send and seize him. He was told he is in Dothan. So he sent his horses and chariots there and a great army. They came by night and surrounded the city. An attendant of the man of God rose early in the morning and went out. An army with horses and chariots was all around the city. His servants said, Alas, master, what shall we do? He replied, Do not be afraid, for there are more of us than there are with them. Then Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. So the Lord opened the eyes of the servant and he saw the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. 
and the Arameans came down against him, Elijah prayed to the Lord and said, strike this people, please, with blindness. So he struck them with blindness, as Elisha had asked. Elisha said to them, this is not the way, and this is not the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. And he led them to Samaria. As soon as they entered Samaria, Elisha said, O oh Lord, open the eyes of these men so that they may see. The Lord opened their eyes, and they saw that they were inside Samaria. When the king of Israel saw them, he said to Elisha, Father, father shall I kill them? Shall I kill them? He answered, No. Did you capture with your sword and your bow those whom you want to kill? Set food and water before them so that they may eat and drink, and let them go to their master. So he prepared for them a great feast. After they ate and drank, he sent them on their way, and they went to their master. And the Arameans no longer came raiding into the land of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle this morning is the third song of Isaiah, together. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral persons, not at all meaning the immoral of this world, or the greedy and robbers or idolaters, since you would then need to go out of the world. Now I am writing to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of brother or sister who is sexually immoral or greedy, or is an idolater, reviler, drunkard, or robber. Do not even eat with such a one. For what have I to do with judging those outside? Is it not those who are inside that you are to judge? God will judge those outside. Drive out the wicked person from among you. When any of you has a grievance against another, do you dare to take it to court before the unrighteous instead of taking it before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try trivial cases? Do you not know that we are to judge angels to say nothing of ordinary matters? If you have ordinary cases, then do you appoint as judges those who have no standing in the church? I say this to your shame. Can it be that there is no one among you wise enough to decide between one believer and another, but a believer goes to court against a believer and before unbelievers at that? In fact, to have lawsuits at all with one another is already a defeat for you. Why not rather be wronged? Why not rather be defrauded? But you yourselves wrong and defraud and believers at that. The word of the Lord. And speak to God. Our second canticle, you are God, together. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim, seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. 
the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, and all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Read in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Grant that, like your servant, Philander Chase, we may have the grace to minister in Christ's name in every place, led by bold witnesses to the gospel of the Prince of Peace. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Please join me in a prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. We pray for the Graham's family as they prepare to lay to rest their patriarch Stephen and pray for the family and friends of Stephen as they gather today to mark and celebrate his life in the wake. We pray for all those who are undergoing medical tests today or anticipating medical tests in the days to come. We pray for their, their healing and their peace of mind, peace of hearts. We pray for all those who are in conflict that they may find reconciliation and healing as well. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit 
may so move every human heart and especially the hearts of the people of this land, the barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear and hatreds cease that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me for the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, everybody. That concludes morning prayer. We have time for a quick cup of coffee and... Uh, and we continue on with our, our busy day in, the, the, uh, in service to Christ and service to our community. We have Bible study at 10 o'clock, noonday devotions at noon, go figure. We have a couple of meetings, a couple of pastoral calls. We have evening prayer at five o'clock. Um, the Wednesday supper, which um, is in our parking lot, it's, it's takeout delivery. So come on, come on up. Grab a meal, grab some food off our um, our, our moving Anyone. pantry. I'm sorry, what's Mini my word? Mobile food pantry. Mini mobile, that's my word. Mini Mart mobile, mobile food pantry. Sometimes there's also fresh produce and sometimes fresh dairy. It's, it's, it is such a gift. Oh, and desserts. You never know when desserts are there. It is a, it is a gift to be able to provide uh, food for our community. And after that, we have um, Stephen Graham's wake, Stephen Graham's visitation. So busy day in the life of Christ. And we give thanks for all the work that uh, we do in, in his name and, and glory. And now more coffee. Uh, have a great day, everybody. We will see you soon. If you are on YouTube, like and subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. And uh, have a great day. We will see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye.